if you're wanting to try out the Fedora 16 operating system and you don't want to necessarily wipe out your current operating systems on your computer, one of the options is to install it here in a virtual machine. And so that's what we're going to do here. So we can basically run the operating system as if it were just another program running. And what I'm going to do first off is go to the fedoraproject.org website to acquire my actual image of the operating system or my operating system itself. And if I choose the download tab, it, we're going to give us the option here to download. So we're just going to download this installable live media. This will allow us to have an ISO CD image. And we'll go ahead and click on that. And it says it's going to begin here in a second. If it doesn't, I can do that manual link. There it goes. I'll just go ahead and hit save. It's going to go ahead and download now. And what this is, it allows us to run the whole entire operating system from a CD. If you want to boot from a CD on a computer, you could definitely do that. What we're going to do here is uh, open up VirtualBox after it's done downloading. And uh, once it's done downloading, basically, uh, we'll install it in VirtualBox itself and so that we can run it here on our computer. So I'm going to let that download for one second, and I'll come back here in the video. And so with the actual file downloaded now, I'm going to go ahead and open up VirtualBox. And uh, VirtualBox is a free download from virtualbox.org, and here it is running. And I've already got one virtual machine created. I'm going to go ahead and create myself another virtual machine for Fedora. Just choose New, and we're going to go through this guide. It's really easy. I just click Next, type in what I want to name it as. And I'll just go ahead and say Fedora. And I'm just going to go ahead and do uh, 16. I'll just type in OS and you can see that it's already chose Linux Fedora as my operating system. This is just the, the presets for it. I'll just hit next, give it some memory. I've got 8 gigs of RAM on this computer. If you've got smaller like 4 gigs or 3 gigs, uh, you should be able to get away with 1024. It's uh, basically that's a gig of RAM and we're going to go ahead and hit next. If you wanted to add more, definitely do that. Uh, but here I am creating a new hard drive. It says recommended size is 8 gigs. We're going to go ahead and just hit next for this. And we're going to ask us here how to create this hard drive. I'm going to go ahead and choose that I want it to be a VDI. That's VirtualBox's default uh, file format for the hard drives. Dynamically expanding basically means that if I create like a 20 gig hard drive and I have only use up 10 of it, it's going to only take up 10 of it on my real computer or my host computer and so um, that's usually the common and preferred method if you wanted to allocate all 20 gigabytes in that file then you could do this but I prefer using the dynamics. I'm going to go ahead and hit next here's my Fedora hard drive that it's going to create for me to install my operating system onto and 8 gigs is a little small for what I want so I'm going to go ahead and just bump that up to 20 just in case I was to use this for a long time and wanted to install a lot of apps on it I could do that I've got enough space for it Go ahead and hit next and create. Create. Now my Fedora 16 operating system is set up. I don't have it installed yet. What I do need to do is I'm going to make some changes to this. I'm going to go to settings and I want to go ahead and go to under display. I want to tick, check this uh, th enable 3D acceleration and I'm just going to bump up my acceleration uh, the amount of video memory. This will allow us to run that 3D desktop which is in the GNOME 3 desktop now. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, hit OK, and we're ready to hit Start. The first time we run this, it's going to go ahead and ask us where to find the operating system from. Basically, is what it's going to ask us. If I hit Next, and it tells me where, to, where is the installation media, I'm going to go ahead and hit that folder, and I'm going to go to my Downloads, and this is where my Fedora 16, that uh, image that came from the website is. I'll choose that, and I'll hit Open, and I'll hit Next, and Start and you're going to see here right off the bat that it's going to go ahead and start up my operating system so I just hit enter and let it boot up the operating system now at the time of this video the Norm GNOME 3 desktop does not load up automatically we actually go into this what's called fallback mode and so there's a couple of things that I'm going to have to do to get this working after I go to install this now I'm running this off of the live CD or the the image that I downloaded so we actually need to install it so I'm going to go ahead and just choose applications and what we'll need to do is go to system tools and then from here we can install it to a hard drive if for some reason the GNOME 3 desktop does show up it's the last option you have to go up to the instead of applications it'll say activities and the last option on the menu will go ahead and uh, be to install the hard drive so I'm going to go ahead and click the install the hard drive and here's the installer so what I'm going to need to do is actually hit next for my language I'm going to choose the basic storage devices because this is the typical type of hard drive installation so I'll just go ahead and hit next
And now this little warning device that pops up says, hey, there's nothing on this particular one. It's a blank one. So we're just going to say, go ahead and discard any data that might have been on there. And uh, this is the hard drive. We actually get to choose a name for our computer for the network. And so I'm just going to go ahead and make a name up. We'll, you, what you want is something that's unique so that other computers on there don't have the same name. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in Fedora 16. Dot, and this is going to be uh, virtual. And that's good enough and unique for me right now. So I'll go ahead and hit next. Choose the time zone that you want. We'll hit next. And then the root password, I'm going to go ahead and use a kind of a simple password here. And it's going to give me a little warning. And that's just because I want to show you this warning. It says that it's weak. Uh, you, can also, you can use it if you really want to, but that's the root password. Basically, anytime you need to run with administrative rights, uh, you'll need to use that password. So that's a password you want to keep and kind of make that secure. But now that we've got this option here, I'm going to go ahead and say to use all my space on my hard drive so that everything on that 20 gig hard drive I created is used up. If I wanted to encrypt my system, I could do that as well. Some Linux distributions do that, but we're just going to not do that in Fedora 16 for now. If you wanted to, you definitely could do that. And then the last confirmation I'm going to have here is, to, do I really want to write the changes to the disk? And I'll choose yes. Go ahead and write the changes to the disk. And it's going to go through now and actually install and set up the, heart, the operating system. We'll get a reboot here in a second. It'll take about 5 to 10 minutes to install everything. So we'll wait for that reboot. When that install finishes, we'll get the reboot button, and so all I'm going to do now is just go ahead and hit that reboot button, and it will reboot the operating system. And one of the things that I forgot to do here was to actually uh, dismount my CD-ROM. So what we're actually going to need to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to my CD devices and actually remove that drive. And we'll go ahead and force the, uh, um, basically, we're unmounting it. And that way when I restart it, it doesn't boot from that live CD. So now what I'll need to do is I can just go to machine and I can go ahead and say reset. And it's going to go ahead and reset this uh, operating system for us. We're going to go ahead and just hit enter for our default choice for that kernel. And we'll just go ahead and let it boot up. And so now we're presented with the rest of the installation, which is the welcome screen. I'm going to go ahead and hit forward. And this is the license agreement. We'll accept the license agreement and the time and date if you want it to synchronize over the internet uh, for time I'm going to go ahead and do that so that way my clock keeps up to date I'm going to go ahead and hit forward and it's going to go ahead and start that service now here's where I'll choose to type in my first username for this operating system so I'm going to go ahead and just for my video I'll type in lecture snippets the username should all be lowercase like you see there and so we're going to go ahead and leave that lowercase. The password, go ahead and set yourself a password for the user account. And of course my password says it's going to be weak because it is a weak password, but it does match. And we're going to go ahead now and uh, choose forward. And then we're pretty much at the end here. We've got the option to either send or not send our profile. Since this is a virtual machine, I'm not going to send it. Uh, you can choose to send it if you want so they can kind of see who's uh, installing it and what kind of profiles they can better build the operating system for. I'm just going to go ahead and say no, not, do not send at this moment. And it's going to go ahead and finish the install for us. So here we are at the login screen now. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And I'll show you how to get your system prepped up ready for installing that GNOME 3 for the uh, 3D desktop. And you're going to notice right off the bat, it's going to tell us that GNOME 3 failed again. Uh, what I usually do is go to Accessories. We're going to go here to the Terminal. Actually, it's going to be under System Tools for this one, Terminal. And the first thing I like to do is I'll make sure my system is the most up to date. So we're going to go ahead and type in SU. It's going to switch us over to the root user. Type in that administrative password we set. And now I'm going to be logged in as a root. So what I want to do now is just type in yum. And we're going to go ahead and say... Um, update. It's going to go through and it's going to take a few minutes to run through this. If you get to the prompt where it says yes or no, go ahead and hit Y to do the update. And so now here I am prompt for the installation of all these new updates that need to be done to my operating system. You can see I've got 203 packages at the moment, so it's going to take probably a good half an hour before this actually gets finished or maybe even longer depending on what it is. I'm going to go ahead and hit Y and I'll hit enter and it's just going to go through now and install it and I'll basically be back on the video when this is done. 
All right, now that the operating system is completely updated, what we're going to do now is just install a couple applications. I'm going to go ahead and type in yum install, and what I want to install is make gcc kernel. Uh, this is the devel for the development uh, packages as well as dkms. Go ahead and hit enter. It's going to run through real quick. Uh, when it prompts you, go ahead and hit Y. And you'll notice that it's going to install a couple other things too that I didn't type in. These are all the dependencies or other applications, with the kernel headers and so forth. So this all gets put in with these um, packages that I'm going to install. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, enter. It'll go through here and install this. All right, so it only took about two minutes to install that. Now what we'll need to do is install the VirtualBox guest editions in the operating system. So what I'll do for this is click on devices and we'll say install guest editions. And what's going to happen here is it's going to basically load the guest editions in a CD. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel on this one right here. Now that I've got my terminal open, I can actually navigate to this location. So if I do CD, I'm going to go ahead and do the forward slash and uh, we'll type in media. If you start typing it in and hit the tab key, it should fill it in for us. And then what I'll do is type in a capital V. And if I hit tab, you'll see that it fills in the rest for us and hit enter. This is going to take us inside that folder location where it's at. If I hit LS for it to list all my files and folders that are in there, I'm going to go ahead and see these are all the different packages to run. And so to start with, what I'm going to do now uh, is go ahead and type in the dot forward slash and then vbox linux editions.run. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter on that one. And you're going to see that it's going to go through and install the guest editions for me. And so this will take a minute or two. Now it does show that I did have one error here building the main guest editions module. I may have had to restart the operating system for that to work. We're going to go ahead and see if it works even without that uh, installed there. So what I'll do next is I need to fix, uh, even when we start it, uh, SE Linux here still has a problem. So I'll type in one more command and then we're going to be done and, and do a restart on this one. So it's restore con and it's going to be the dash capital R and this is going to be so that it works for all the folders within the uh, OPT folder. And I'm going to do also the dash V, and you'll see that right there. And we'll do forward slash OPT, and I'll go ahead and hit enter. And I am now done, and so what I'll do is just type in reboot. And it's going to go ahead and reboot my operating system, and we'll see if this works. And here I am at the login screen again. I'm going to go ahead and log in now. And let this load up. Alright, so after I rebooted here, I'm going to go ahead and go back to Applications. And I'm going to go ahead and open up the terminal. And we're going to reinstall the guest editions. So it's real easy. Just go ahead and do SU to switch our user. And type in that user password. And then what we're going to do is type in CD forward slash media again. And the VBox Linux, our VBox editions. Go ahead and hit enter. And we're going to type in the uh, period forward slash virtual VBox. Linux editions run. And it's going to go through here. It's going to uninstall what we had. It's going to reinstall it for us. And this time it should work. So after it got here uh, to the basically where I had the error before, it took about two minutes and it finally went through. And you can see everything is okay now. And what I'll do is just hit the up arrow. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the up arrow, let's see, twice, three times, four times, five. There it is, five times up. And there's the last command that I typed in before we uh, redid the reboot. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter again on that. And now I'll do a reboot again. So I'll just type in reboot and well, hopefully this, this time it'll load up for us. All right, so now I have the login screen. You can see the login screen looks a little bit different than it did before. Now if you are here at the operating system and it locks up or basically it just stays at the login system or the uh, background here and it doesn't load up, one thing that I did try is if you hold the right control key, the, the control key that's on the right side of your keyboard, down and press delete, it actually while I had this selected, it actually let me log out of what it was trying to do and it brought me back here to this login screen. So I'm going to go ahead and try to log in with my password. I'm going to go ahead and hit login and let's see if it loads up the desktop. And so now you can see here that it actually did load up my desktop and here it is. I hit activities and I've got the GNOME 3 desktop currently working. So this concludes the video on getting Fedora 16 installed in VirtualBox and getting the GNOME 3 desktop to work.